Hello everyone. This is unit 9 of the first year English compulsory textbook. Uh, the name of the unit is The White Lamb by Siro Hanzadan. We are going to talk about the writer first. Uh, Siro Hanzadan was born in 1915 and he died in 1998. He belongs to a country called Armenia uh, and he was born in 1915 in one of the cities called Goris. After graduating from the pedagogical college, he uh, worked at Tatev Secondary School as a teacher. So he basically had training to become a teacher. And uh, later he worked in different uh, schools and he was basically a teacher of the Armenian language and literature. So most of his stories are written in the Armenian language and then they were later translated into English and other languages of the world. Hans Zan's first story titled Dry Desert was published in 1934. And he is more popular because of the novel that he wrote. The name of the novel was The Soil, uh, which was written in 1954 and 1955. And then later on, he uh, came up with a composition which was devoted to children, mostly uh, stories which were addressed to children. And the name of that uh, composition was Lal Hams and which was published in 1955. So today we are going to do the story written by him. And the name of the story is The White Lamb. Now, what is the main idea? The main idea of the story, The White Lamb, is the heartbreaking disappointment of an old father, a Navasad, who has sacrificed everything he could for his adopted son, Arshak. He raised an orphan boy, gave every facility he could to him, sent him to Moscow after selling all his valuables. Arshak became a government official, but in return, the son has forgotten him and he didn't visit him for 10 years. And he didn't even bother to meet his father when he was in town even on an official task. Uh, and uh, as far as the main idea is concerned, Shakespeare in one of his plays has written, how sharper than a serpent's tooth is to have a thankless child. That nothing hurts you more, nothing hurts a parent more than to have a thankless child. Even uh, a snake's bite would not be as painful as having a thankless child or a child who does not show any gratitude towards uh, his parents. It is truly devastating for parents when their children forget their duties towards them. So the main idea is about children not performing their duties towards their parents when the parents have been so sacrificing uh, for them. Uh, as far as the summary is concerned, uh, again, the, the points are going to be mutual. The story is about an old gardener, Navasad, who was a widower. It means that his wife was not there. She had died. He didn't have any children of his own, but he had adopted the orphan son of his brother and sister-in-law, Arshak. So Arshak was not his biological son. He had adopted him and he adopted him because um, the brother and the sister-in-law had died and they left this little boy alone in this world. And Nav Navasar, he did not have children of his own. So he said, why not, you know, adopt him and raise him as his own son. He had sold every valuable thing he had to educate Arshak. So this shows how devoted he was towards uh, the son. Arshak went to Moscow to get higher education. This is a time when Armenia was actually part of the USSR. It was a, a, a big federation and Moscow was obviously the capital of the country and that uh, promised the best education in the country. So he uh, sold everything in order to send Arshak to Moscow to study. There are hints in the story that tells you how much uh, Navasad loved the boy. Arshak became a government official, which was considered very important back then. Even now, if you get a government job, it is supposed to be a very prestigious um, thing. He didn't come to meet Navasad for 10 years. One day, Navasad found out that Arshak was visiting the town. He ran to his house to prepare a delicious meal for his son. He took the little white lamb along too. He cleaned the house. He brought fruit, which is melon and figs for Arshak. He kept waiting. But Ashak didn't show up. He decided to slaughter the lamb but changed his mind in the last minute and decided to wait for the son to come. The old man kept comforting himself by thinking that Ashak would have something very important to do in the town. At last, because being an old man, tired of waiting, he fell asleep. And he was awakened by his neighbor who told him that Ashak was leaving town and he was so shocked because he could not uh, understand and he could not accept the fact that the son would come to the town and not meet him. So he climbed on the roof to see a speeding sedan leaving the town which somehow certified the fact that Arshak had actually left the town without even bothering to meet um, his uh, father. Heartbroken, he went back to the, his orchard where he works with the white lamb following him. So somehow the end shows that even the animals are more loyal to human beings and human beings themselves. 
uh, in the last story that we did, we did the elements of the story. And this is something that we are going to do with every story that we do. We are going to discuss what the setting is and, you know, what is the plot, what are the characters, point of view, theme and conflict. As far as the setting is concerned, the story is set in a village in Armenia. So this is not a very big city or a town that we are talking about. It's a very little village in a hilly area in Armenia. And the time uh, of the year is summer because we can see from the fruit that are available, melons and uh, figs, that it is uh, maybe July, June or July. Uh, as far as the plot is concerned, plot is like an outline of the story. Navasad is waiting to meet his adopted son, Arshak, who has come to town after 10 years. He prepares for his arrival, but is disappointed greatly when the son doesn't bother to meet him before leaving the town. So this is your plot in a nutshell. Characters are two main characters. Main is Navasad, who is the old gardener. And we do not meet Arshak in the story. So he is just referenced. Uh, that he is in the town and he's sitting with the chairman, etc. He, he does not actually come uh, to Navarsa, then he does not have any dialogues in the whole story. So he is the adopted son. Point of view is a third person narrative, it is written in third person. And the theme is love of parents for children that how selfless parents are and how devoted and how loving and sacrificing they are towards their children. And on the other hand, uh, the second theme is obviously the thanklessness of children that despite having all that from their parents they are still thankless and they do not show any kind of gratitude towards their parents and the conflict is the outer conflict is between between the old and the new generation that the new generation feels that they do not owe anything to the old generation and the old generation still believes that loyalty is important and the second conflict is between a sacrificing parent which is obviously the father Navasar and a thankless child which is um, Arshak uh, the, the one who does not even come to meet his father. Uh, as far as comprehension questions are concerned, uh, what arrangements were made by Navasad uh, for the coming home of Arsha? Uh, so um, you can read it. He he has done a lot and he's so excited while he's doing it. He was an old man and for him even walking and you know moving from one place to another is such a huge task but still he was a poor man who lived alone in a small village cottage when he heard that his adopted son Arshak had come back to the village after 10 years he collected some fruit for Arshak he also took a lamb to slaughter it to prepare a delicious meal for Arshak so obviously you know he believes in a big banquet kind of a dinner for for the son who has come back after 10 years he swept and cleaned his entire cottage. He cleaned every room. He cleaned the yard. He also collected some wood to burn in the fireplace during the night to keep the room warm. So everything shows how much love there is in his heart for his son. And, you know, he's looking forward to meet him. Uh, the second question was, why was Navasar so excited at the arrival of Arsha? Navasad was excited at the arrival of Arshak because he had not come back to the village for 10 years and he was a child when he left the village and he went to the city for education. Now he had come back as a government official. He was now a rich man with a big house in Moscow and Navasad was so proud that his only family member had become an important man in Moscow. So he wanted his house uh, to be prepared in a way to welcome Arshak. Obviously, he's very happy as well. Then describe the plight. Plight is obviously the dilemma, uh, the poor state, uh, you can say the tragedy of Navasad after the departure of Arshak without meeting him. Arshak left the village without meeting Navasad. Navasad was very disappointed. He felt as, as if the roof had come down on his head. He looked much older and his back stooped over than ever. He ever became, uh, his eyes became sunken. And his gait, gait is how you walk. It becomes unsteady. He thought that he was a dead soul with no life. So if you read at the beginning, when he hears the news of the sun coming, he's jumping around and, you know, he's moving very quickly. He's cleaning the yard. So he's acting like a young man because he's so happy. But after that disappointment, he becomes much older than he actually is. And his back is stooped and his eyes are sunken. And he's devastated by the fact that the sun has not met him. Um, then the next question is write down the plot of the story. We have already discussed it. So you can refer back to the plot and you can read the answer from here as well. We have also talked about the conflict. That's question number six. Is there any conflict in the story? Yes, obviously there is a conflict because every good story is based on a conflict, a problem around which the story moves. Conflict in a story is a struggle between opposing forces. So some opposite forces are working like a hero and a villain and a good force and a bad force. 
So there is a deep conflict between the old village tradition and the life of the modern city. The old man Navasat presents the old village culture. Arshak, on the other hand, represents modern city life. The old man Navasat hopes that Arshak will back, come back to the home. He waits for him eagerly, but Arshak visits the house of the chairman for some official work and he stays with the chairman and then leaves the village without seeing Navarsad. Thus, the conflict between the old and new tradition continues until the end of the story and it is not resolved. The next question is, how would you resolve the conflict if you were in the author's place? Obviously, it's an evaluatory question and you can come up with your own answers, but this is just li a little help that I'm giving you that conflict in a story is a struggle between opposing forces. There can be two types of conflict in a story. One is external conflict, like between two characters, and there's an un internal conflict that is within your own mind uh, as far as the thought process of a character is concerned. In the story, The White Lamb, the conflict is external, if I were the author of the story and I have to resolve the conflict, I would show that Navasad reconciled with the fact that Ashak had become a part of the city life and does not belong to the old village life anymore. These two belong in two different worlds. This reconciliation would make Navasad less sad and more satisfied. This would resolve the external conflict between the characters of Navasad and Ashak. So one way of doing it is that showing in a dialogue somewhere when Navarasad said that, okay, now I understand that he's not going to come back and he's more comfortable in a city, but my life has to continue in the village. Uh, compare and contrast the characters of Navarasad and Narshak. Uh, your two main characters. Navarasad is an old peasant. His wife has died. When his brother and sister-in-law died of hunger during the war, he adopts their only son, Arshak. He looks after him. He sells his precious thing to send Arshak for higher studies to the city. This shows that Navarsad is a very caring family man. Although the son is not his biological son, but he does not make any kind of a difference uh, between um, you know, raising him as his own son. He invests money, time, brings him up, Arshak, to become a successful person. On the other hand, Arshak is a selfish character. He does not visit the father even once in 10 years. And when he visits the village after 10 years for some official job, he does not even see Navasad. This shows that he does not acknowledge the sacrifices made by Navasad to make him a successful person in life. He is the thankless child. And then the question, how sharper than a serpent's truth? I already told you this is a line by Shakespeare in the play is King Lear. Usme say uh, we have taken this line. This quote refers to the pain of not being appreciated by one's child. Parents lament thankless children when they do not show the parents' gratitude and appreciation. This statement is true in the context of the story, The White Lamb. In this story, an old peasant, the gardener, Navarsad, brings up his adopted son, Arshak. Navarsad invests his time and money to make Arshak successful. Navarsad expects and rightfully ex expects Arshak to be thankful to him at least. But on the other hand, Arshak is thankless and he does not appreciate Navarsad's efforts at all. Last one is draw the character sketch of Arshak. Was he justified in leaving the village without meeting Navarsad? I don't think so because nothing justifies his behavior with his father. The story does not talk about Arshak. I already told you that we do not meet him in, in person. He does not come and he does not have a dialogue with your main character. He appears to be a selfish character because there are, there are instances in which Navarsad sends a person to the chairman's office and he tells him, uh, Arshak that you know that your father is waiting for you and even then he does not even come to meet him he would have just taken him half an hour maybe to come and meet the father but somehow he has already forgotten taken the advantage from the father when he wanted it and now he has forgotten all about it maybe he is now ashamed of having a very old peasant father living back in a village because uh, he has become too involved in his city life Navarasad brings him up affectionately. Navarasad sells his valuable belongings to pay for his studies in the city. But he is unthankful to Navarasad. He does not visit him even once in 10 years. And when he visits the village after 10 years of some for some official job, he does not even bother to come home to see Navarasad. This shows that he does not acknowledge the sacrifice made by Navarasad to make him a successful person in life. So this is the reaction of a thankless uh, uh, gracious without a person without any uh, gratitude in him he's not gracious he's not appreciative and uh, this is um, this can be related to a lot of children um, who do not appreciate the sacrifices that their parents have made for them and they take it for granted and they believe that every father's duty is to educate their children like this but it is not true it is only a very good parent a uh, very good father who raises children like Navarasad raised 
Arshad, even when he was not his real biological son. Thank you.